By the end of this lecture, you're going to know how to configure parameterized routes in our root definition object. You're also going to learn how components can be notified with what the parameter values are when the URL gets visited. And you're also going to know how we can have optional parameters in our routes. So sometimes we need part of the path in one or more of our routes to be a variable. A common example of this is an ID. So let's say we have a blog and each article in our blog has a unique ID. So the URLs for each blog article might look like this. So we have slash blog slash one slash two slash three and then slash four. Now we could write a root for each article like this. Each individual blog article would have its own components, a blog one component, blog two component, blog three component, and blog four component. But a better solution is just to have one root with one component called blog component and pass to the blog component the number part of the URL. That's what we call a parameterized root and it would look something like this. We have one component called blog component and the path has a variable called ID. We know it's a variable since it begins with a colon. So a path can have any number of variables as long as they all start with a colon and they all have different names. Another thing to know about parameterized routes is that non-parameterized routes always take priority over parameterized routes. So in the configuration in front of you, if we visited slash blog slash moo, we would actually show moo component, even though slash blog slash moo also matches with blog component. That's because the non-parameterized slash blog slash moo route takes priority over the parameterized slash blog slash ID route. But how do we actually pass into the blog component the value of the ID variable? If we visited slash blog slash one, how does blog component know that the ID is one and therefore to show the appropriate article? To do that, we use something called an activated route. We first import it and then we inject it into the constructor of our blog component. It then exposes an observable through its params property, which we can subscribe to and then be notified with whatever parameters that are in the route. So now if we navigated to slash blog slash one, the number one would get emitted on the observable and this would get printed to the console like this. So for the rest of this lecture, we're going to continue building the iTunes search application we've been working on in the other lectures. But as we perform searches with the application, one thing to note is that the URL doesn't change. Therefore, if I refresh the page after I perform a search, then I lose all of my search results. The state of my application is lost. So let's turn the search route into a parameterized route where the search term is in the URL. So if I refresh the page, it will then perform the same search and get us back to where we were. So I'm going to start by just adding in a variable called term to our root configuration for our search route. But now if I reload the page and, and try to navigate to slash search, you can see that we're actually getting shown the home component. Now the reason for this is that now our URL slash search doesn't match a route. So we are falling back to the catch all route, which just shows us the home component. To match our new parameterized route, we would have to navigate to something like search slash U2. And now we're shown 
the search component. We actually need to pass a parameter to match the root. So therefore, to support both slash search and slash search slash U2, we need two roots in our configuration, like so. The first root will only match slash search, and the second root will match a search with a search term. So now let's import the activated root and inject it into the constructor of our search component. We import it from Angular Router. And then let me expand out search component. And then I inject it onto the constructor of our search component. And just like our example in the slides, I'm just gonna log the parameters to the console for now. So if I inspect element, let's have a look at the console. And now the URL is slash search slash U2. We are using the parameterized URL. If I view that page, refresh the browser. And now you can see we're seeing the parameter, the parameter of our parameterized root being printed to the console. Now, if we navigate to slash search, slash u2, we see an object with the term of u2 being printed to the console. We see the parameters being printed to the console. But we are not actually performing a search for u2. To do that, we need to call the do search function from the activated root subscribe callback. So we need to call this do search function here from within our subscribe callback. And I'm just going to remove word wrapping from the editor to make it clearer. So to our do search function, we're actually passing in the value of the term property, which is u2. So after this, now when we visit the search slash U2 URL, we actually perform a search for U2 as well. But now if we search for another term, for example, I'm gonna search for love, we get the results we expect, but the URL doesn't change. If we look at the URL, it's still saying slash search slash U2. So that leads me to an important note. When using routing, if some part of the state of your application is in the URL, then you need to update your application by navigating to the correct URL. That way the URL matches the state of your application. And if you bookmarked or shared the URL, then visiting it again will get you back to the same state. So for us, the search term itself is part of the URL. So to perform a search, we need to navigate to the correct URL. So now if I open up the code that I had collapsed previously, we can see that when we click the search button, we're actually calling the do search function. So instead of this, I want to call another function, a function called on search. I then create the function on search on our component. And then when the on search function gets called, I'm going to use the router to navigate to a URL. But if you remember from the previous lecture, in order to use the router, we need to inject it into our constructor. So let's inject it as well. And for the link params array, I'm first going to pass in search. And then the second parameter in our path is the actual search term itself. So I'm just gonna pass in the variable search term, which gets passed to the on search function. So now let me close the console. 
refresh the application. The URL contains U2, so it's performing a search for U2. And now when I search for love, we can see the URL changes to love. This change in the URL triggers the activated root callback here. And in this callback, we call do search. And in the do search function, we actually issue the search to the API. But the important thing here is that the URL and the state of our application are now in sync. So now that I've searched for love, if I was to refresh the application, we would then get to the same state we were before because it's going to redo the search for love and uh, show it on the screen. So before we finish off, I'm just going to go back to the root configuration and I'm just going to have a look, a relook at the solution where we have two roots configured. One for when there is a search term and another for when there isn't a search term. Another way to think about this is that the variable term is optional. It might be present and it might not. And we want the app to function correctly in either situation. Angular has a mechanism to support these optional parameters. And to demonstrate it, firstly, I'm going to get rid of the second root with the fixed term variable, leaving us with just one root to support our search. And then in the onSearch function, instead of navigating to a root with the fixed term variable, we can instead pass in an object containing whatever parameters we want. So as the second parameter to the link params array, I'm now passing an object, an object with a key of term, and the value is the term that we're passing in. So now if I go back to the root of our application, let me refresh the application actually. Now when I search for something like love, the search functions correctly, we're seeing the love results on the bottom of the page. But if I look at the URL, you'll see something a bit strange. Instead of seeing slash search slash love, we're seeing slash search semicolon term is equal to love. This is something called the matrix URL notation. And it's a series of optional key value pairs separated with a semicolon character. And it still works with the activated root. So the parameters being passed the activated root or being emitted on the observable of activated root still contain the parameters in the URL. Okay, that's perfectly fine. But now the term parameter is actually optional. And since it's optional, it sometimes can be blank. So if we actually just provide no term, we still seem to be performing a search. We're actually performing a search for the string undefined because, well, we're passing in no term. It's trying to do a, a search with a blank value and a blank value just resolves to undefined, the string undefined. So to solve this, let's just add some defensive coding to our subscribe callback here. So only if the params contain a key of terms do we actually perform a search. So now if I refresh the page and our search URL has no parameters, that's fine. We're not actually performing a search. Now when I search for love, the URL changes. So it now contains term is equal to love. And now when I refresh the page, because the URL contains the search term, we're now still performing the same query and showing the results on the, on the screen. And again, if we search again for something else, the URL changes to support our new search term. So to summarize, with parameterized routes, we can support variable 
paths in our roots. And Angular also supports optional routes via passing in an object to the navigate function and using the matrix URL notation. So far in this section, we've only shown how we can output one component on the page, depending on the route. In the next lecture, we're going to show how we can have nested routes and output multiple different components on the page, depending on the URL.